So, how do you transform a deteriorating painted mural into masterpiece of glass mosaic tile? What it really takes, step by step. Every intricate little piece. Okay, I'm going to show you part of the process where I take my template. This will all make sense in the end when I start piecing it together. So, how do you transform a deteriorating painted mural into a mosaic glass tile work of art. This is actually my house. This mural has been here since the house was built. Since it's fallen apart, we needed to decide what we were going to do with it. We we're gonna try and repair it. We we're just gonna paint over it or replace it with something. Since it's kind of in many family photos since the 60s it was kind of something that we didn't want to just get rid of altogether. So we're going to replace this with an image of Venice in glass mosaic tile made by a very talented artist that's working on it right now. Her name is Angie Ray and I'll put all her information in the description below. In this video, we're going to get into <clears throat> how she goes about selecting the materials, cutting the materials, and, and, and the, the process of making this 11 foot, I think it's 11 foot 6 by 3 foot 10 mural. Then she's going to uh, ship it to me, and I'm going to install it. It's just amazing the work that she does. So let's get to that. Hey, everybody. My name's Angie Ray. I am the owner of Unique Mosaics, and my studio is based out of South Salt Lake, Utah. Um, what I'm about to do, or show you, rather, is the, a little bit of a process of how I make a mosaic mural. I'll be doing a project with Sal. It's going to be of Venice, Italy. So, it's a really cool project. I'm going to be working with stained glass and shipping it out to him in sheets so that he can install it. So behind me is a collection of glass pieces that I got to do this project with. Um, I will show you a little bit what I picked out. And these are just various colors of glass pieces. And I chose the sizes based on my estimated square footage that I'm going to be able to need. Now, obviously, they're not going to stay in sheets, but this is how it all starts out. So it will be cut down and then into manageable pieces. Okay, I'm going to show you part of the process where I take my template and I have laid it down and what I used for a template um, I got I had this big picture printed out so Sal gave me an image that he wanted me to make in mosaic and then told me the size dimensions and then what I did was I had a friend of mine who has a giant printer she printed this out. The mosaic isn't going to look exactly like this because in order for me to stay within a budget, I'm going to cut larger pieces and mix in some smaller pieces instead of doing like an entire thing in tiny mosaics. So each project's different and I, I handle it in different ways. But I did need this image so that I can keep the proportions and everything accurate. So, for example, these posts, I'll probably do in one 
one piece. So I'll cut that piece out and then I'll cut this piece out. But I needed some guidelines and that's what this image is, is doing. So luckily I have creative freedom and um, Sal is trusting me to do a really awesome job. I made sure that all of my corners were square and the reason why this is here is because I needed a um, something to butt up the glass against. So I made sure I got this molding and built sort of like a makeshift frame around the outside of it and just clamped it down where I needed to. And on my table, I can't put any clamps here, so I have some really sticky double-sided tape that this isn't going to go anywhere. Now I have a clear line to make sure that the work that I do is going to fit in the space. I'm going to show you guys how I cut down a big piece of glass. This is 8 inch thick stained glass and I will be cutting it down to smaller pieces so that I can work with them in the mosaic. For this particular piece, I know that I'm going to use some random shapes. So being exact isn't really that important, but I do need to make sure that I cut the glass down to size. And I start out by using this tool. So it scores and then it snaps with the feet right here. It's uh, made by Ruby. And I love this tool for this, for this purpose. So first I'm gonna score the flattest side of the glass. And I start in the middle. It's best to start in the middle of a larger piece of glass so that it cuts properly. So there's that. Um, because this is mosaics, I can pick and choose what pieces I want. So I'm going to do it here as well. I try to only score one time because it's kind of a one shot thing. So now my pieces are getting smaller because I'm wanting these random. Kind of going at an angle to make sure I get the shapes that I want. Okay, now the strips that I want to cut, um, I'm gonna start in the middle. I want kind of larger pieces to work with. Okay. okay, so I put the the feet here at the bottom and I'm just kind of support it underneath with my hand. Right there, there. And what I do is I just take like a container and I separate each color that I do into different containers so I can see what I have. This will all make sense in the end when I start piecing it together. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit about how I choose colors from the glass that I've already picked up. Um, so I've labeled all my buildings and main structures and see there's uh, buildings 1 through 16. So I've got all of these labeled with sticky notes 
and you come over here to my glass and I have sticky notes um, marking what colors go to what object in the mosaic. So some of the colors go to several objects and I try to make sure that I repeat certain colors to make it more pleasing to the eye. So I've got all of these colors labeled. For my building so I won't get confused and sometimes I'll change things up as I go but I like to have a pretty good plan I've got different colors for the water and then there's also some water color right here in the greens and then I have different colors for the sky And whenever I was purchasing my glass, I was trying to determine how much of each one that I need. So it was kind of a guessing game, but um, for the most part, I, I understood what I needed because of the size of the project. And um, I made sure I got enough square footage. So. If I have to go back and get more, then I'll do that. But I just wanted to get the colors labeled that are for the main structures and the main sections of this mosaic. Uh, everything else that is extra, like, um, like whenever I start making the people in the gondolas, um, <clears throat> then I'll just pull from my own personal stash of stained glass and colors. This is how I get the shapes ready for cutting. And what I've done is I've put down a piece of just wax paper. I put it over the section that I want to cut. And I take my marker and just draw out the shape that I want using the printed template as a guide. So now I have the basic shape drawn and I'm going to cut this piece out, rubber cement this piece over the color of glass that I want and then cut that shape. Here I have the piece of glass I picked out for that particular shape. I have my wax paper cut out and I want to decide which side to use. So because this section is a little bubbly looking, I think I'm gonna pick the swirly side. I'm going to rubber cement glue this piece of um, wax paper to this and just position it to where I want it. Okay, I painted the rubber cement directly on the glass and then just stuck this right over where I want. I'm going to let that dry before, it needs to dry pretty good before you cut, so give it a few minutes to dry and then I'll be able to cut. I'm going to take my piece of glass that I have my template on. The rubber cement has dried and you can see the outside line. I'm going to start cutting it on the ring saw and uh, the ring saw allows me to cut any direction. So I will show you how this works. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Don't forget to watch part one. Links in the cards and the end screen. Also, next video, installation of the mural. Here's some pieces that I've already cut. And as you can tell, I'm not doing all of the detail in the photo as, as the photo shows, but I'm just being creative and cutting out the pieces larger. Still flowing with uh, the template in a way, but just in, in bigger pieces. I use the photo here as a guide for my colors that I choose. So I cut each piece one by one and I'll continue all the way down for the rest of the water. All right, so I'm going to show you how to how I make the water, um, the skinnier pieces for the mural. And 
What I have here is a um, pistol grip oil glass cutter. And then I have these little um, grip pieces. And this is how I pull the glass off after I score it. So what I want, I don't want perfect straight lines because it's, it's water essentially. So there are no perfectly straight lines. Um, I'm going to put my piece down and score a line. Using up some of this scrap glass, it's in an odd shape. And these um, little gripper pieces, the the top of it, if you were to look at it like a like a mouth on a alligator, the top bites down. So if you can see my score line, you grab it and then pull down. And then there's my piece. Now I have a bunch of pieces that I can work with. I take them over here, and I know that I want to mix in some lighter blue in with the greenish, light greenish color. And I'm, I try to follow the picture as far as like color placement goes so that it looks more realistic whenever, uh, whenever I'm finished. It'll light up the spots that need to be Basically, I just put my piece where I want. If I don't, if I want it to fit in a certain way, I just cut the end where I need it to go. So, for example, I'm going to fit this piece right here. And I'll put this in right here and then, so fit that in. And I will continue this throughout until I get all of the water areas filled in. Now I want to make sure that I don't leave too big of a gap and if there is a larger gap uh, like this area right here I'll cut a piece specifically to fit there and actually I can see that piece would go well there and I see the end of this one is about right here so I just kind of mark it with my finger. And the wheeled nippers, I use these, they're almost like scissors, except for glass. So that's kind of how I treat it. And I want this piece to come at more of an angle on both sides. So it's more like this. So I filled in that hole, but that also leaves another little hole and I decide which color I want in that hole. It's basically like putting together a large puzzle, except you get to make the pieces yourself. How I cut out a piece of glass that I don't already have the template cut out for, um, I'm going to show you how to do. Now, most of the time, you can go ahead and do your templating beforehand. But I kind of was freestyling with this and I've already placed the, the glass that's on the outside of the area that I won't cut. I've already placed it there. So <clears throat> in order for me to get the shape that I want, I'm gonna cut a piece of glass that fits in this shape right here in one piece. So. I've taken a piece of uh, wax paper and drawn a line with a marker for the shape that I want. Now, I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to cut out the shape and I'm going to make sure that I cut on the line and this will transfer the shape onto my glass. 
So there's two ways I can do it. I can either rubber cement, glue the glass, uh, this wax paper onto the glass, or I can trace around it with um, a wax, a wax marker, wax crayon. Typically you could use a black Sharpie or something similar when you're tracing the, um, the shape out, but because my glass is dark, you won't be able to see that. And uh, so I'll probably use something lighter, like a, a white marker pen. And there's also a few different ways that you could cut the shape. You can either use a wet saw with a glass blade to do the straight cuts. The inside cuts are, is what would be difficult on a wet saw. You could use a ring saw and I'm actually gonna try to cut this shape out with a, um, with my glass cutter, my, my little handheld glass cutter. So I'm going to put that there. Grab a wax. It's a China marker. That's the official name for this. So, Tape down the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and utilize this straight edge if I can, which looks like I won't be able to right there because it'll be really hard to cut that tiny sliver. So I'm gonna bring it in and bring it in about there. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this down. Take my tape off. And now I have the shape on my glass. So take this over to my cutting area. And I'm gonna start with the pieces that have the straighter area. So I have to start cutting down here even though the shape starts right there. You need um, a complete line, so I'm gonna cut this area straight across and hopefully break this piece off without um, damaging my uh, piece that I'm using. And I just cut by eye, because there's some curvy spots. So I've got that scored. This around, cut this this spot right here. Go ahead and cut that straight. For this curve.
not good to stop, but I did. So I'm gonna try to make it work. I have this piece traced out that I need to cut. So I'm going to start cutting all the pieces, all the angles that I know that I can cut with my pistol grip glass cutter. Now, I'm not real confident that if I cut this curve, uh, it would work out with the pistol grip. So I'm gonna take it over to the ring saw and cut out this curved area. My china marker wiped off with that. So what I'm gonna do, this is where it goes. And I'm going to trace the line because this glass is a little bit translucent. So I just need a little bit of a line, just enough to be able to see. Nice clean curve. I'm just gonna sit this here to see if it's how I want it. And it overhangs a little bit onto this piece. So just gonna take my nippers and make my adjustments with that. Let's see if that fits. And this overhanging right there. And you just make little tweaks and adjustments and it should all fit when it's said and done. And it fits in exactly where it needs to go. Okay, I am finished with the mural. And so what I'm gonna do now is go through all of the water and look for any areas where the joints seem too big and I'm gonna take some light colored blue and use that as accents and fill it in. So I've already started like right here where I've put in little accents, little highlights, and I'm just gonna scan across all the water area and see if there's anything that stands out to me that that I need to fill in. And it's okay to have a little bit of grout joint. Um, that's fine. I just want to make sure that there's none that are too wide. So I found one right here that I think I want to put some of this highlight color. And I'm gonna take my nippers and just cut. Cut some pieces to fill in. Just the tiny little details that um, make a mosaic really cool. There was a pretty big one. And I cut a little piece, a couple pieces to go in there. And I have one right here. The cool thing about this mesh underneath is you can lift it up and move stuff around.
All right, so it is complete. And now we have a 12 foot long by four foot long mosaic mural. Okay, so now that the mural is complete, I want to clean it up because I'm gonna be taping the face of it. And right now <clears throat> there's, there's dust and there's uh, little crumbs. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's like little glass crumbs and things like that on the mosaic. And what I'm gonna do is carefully use a shop vac to um, suck up all of the crumbs and stuff. And I'm not gonna put it directly on the mosaic like this because I don't want all my pieces being sucked up into the shop vac. I'm going to just hold it close and see if that'll help. It usually does pick up a whole lot of the, um, the dust. So I'm gonna start in one corner and work my way all the way to the other side. Okay, here's another process to cleaning the dust. Um, I'm just going to lightly, I'm not pressing down, I've got a, a feather duster and I'm not going to press down on it and push, but I'm going to lightly, lightly dust the area and just pay attention if I do move any tiles uh, that I replace them. Sometimes this picks up tiles, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to be careful. Um, and I'm gonna sweep all of this dust that the feather duster picks up all the way to the end. And then I'm gonna shop back my little dust pile over there. And some of this dust will fall into the cracks where the joints are but that'll be fine because um, we're going to take the face of it. So it actually uh, won't go in between. The tape will just stay on top. So anything that falls in the cracks can be easily um, removed whenever we remove the mesh off the back. And most of it will stick to the sticky mesh. Now, now that everything is dusted, um, oh, by the way, that was not a feather duster I used. That's actually a microfiber duster. Um, it works better, I think, than a feather duster. It's so important that this is clean before we tape it and free of dust. And it does get dusty because it's been in the shop for so long. Glass dust and everything else that you have to worry about. I have a microfiber towel and it's, it's I got it completely wet and then just completely as tight as I could wrung it out so it's not drippy, um, but it's damp. So what I'm gonna do is just lay it out in sections and just kind of tap it like this. So that will make sure that most all of the dust is gone. Um, we definitely want when we start mounting to make sure that there's no dust because the tape needs to stick to the glass and the only way for the tape to stick to the glass properly is if the face of the mosaic is clean because it would be a terrible thing to have like a really dirty section and then the tape not stick to it and then all your pieces come falling off. I just continue this the whole way and it's okay to push down on it. Just carefully lift it up each time and I'm going to continue this for the entirety of the mural. So now I've waited enough time for any moisture that may have gotten onto it from the microfiber cloth dusting. It's had time to dry and I'm going to begin taping. I come over here, I have like a cutting mat and a roll that's about 12 inches wide, 60 feet long. I have several of these and I start by pulling the tape. 
And these pieces don't have to be a specific size. I do want them to be easy to handle whenever I stick it down. So I'm only going to cut a piece that is eh, about this wide. Got a sharp razor blade box cutter knife. And then I take the sticky side down. And I'm going to start in the corner, which is the most difficult place, I think, to start. But And I just lay it down and then carefully just let it fall. The goal here is to not have any wrinkles. So I just push it out to the edge. If it does have some wrinkles, it's not a, a real big issue. Um, there are ways to fix it without pulling the tape back up. So I rub my hand over all the pieces that the tape is on to make sure that each piece is stuck. All right, when I do my next piece, I'm gonna make sure that it overlaps just a little bit. But not too much. So I kind of fold it in like this. And you can do like stick the center carefully and work your way out. So you see it's overlapped that piece just a little bit. And I'm going to continue this all the way down, all the way across. It'll be one huge piece of tape, basically, when I'm done. A couple hours have gone by now, and the whole entire mural has tape on it. I just go through, after I've taped the whole thing, make sure everything's, all the little edges are pushed down, and... If there's any bubbles, I kind of try to get those out. You can use an X-Acto knife if you needed to cut into a bubble to make it go away. Essentially, you're just looking for gaps and places that, that need tape. And I've gotten the tape pretty good. I try to do that as I go along so I don't lose track of where the spot that needs an extra bit of tape. But sometimes there's where two, two pieces meet up and then there's like a little gap. I'll take a, another piece of tape and put over the gap so that it's all one big piece of tape. One thing I wanted to show you is, remember all the glass that I bought and they were all in big sheets. I had many, many pieces of glass. Uh, it's now turned into this right here. So that's pretty much what's left over out of all of the sheets of glass. start cutting the sheets. I've already, I've already cut the first row and I'm going to show you how I set that up. Um, so when I start cutting sheets, I think about the box that this is going to be shipped in. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how do you ship a big mural? And 
Basically, I ship it in boxes, in sheets, and um, the box that I have is 13 inches by 13 inches. So I've got a piece of foam board here that is 12 inches by 12. So I'm gonna make sure that my sheets fit within this area. And I do that for two reasons. One, um, because they're easy, easier to install. They're, you know, a lot less cumbersome to handle when you have uh, the glass mosaics that are, you know, sometimes floppy. So I try to keep it smaller sizes so they're easier to install. And then also I want to make sure they fit in the box. Um, so what I do is I know I'm going to keep it within 12 inches. So I find a grout joint that is not over 12 inches on either side. So that would be this grout joint. I wouldn't be able to go past this piece because that's way too long. So I'm going to start cutting um, and make sure that I just stay within that, that area. Uh, 12 inches this direction. I need to make sure that I don't pass like this line. So I try to find joints that are um, that are wide enough that I can cut in between. And this piece here, I don't want to include that because it goes on up. So I'm going to have to cut it right there. So what I'll do is I'm going to start cutting. Another good idea is to take uh, like a dry erase marker and mark the area. And then that way, uh, that way you can visually see where you need to go because it gets a little confusing sometimes trying to cut these puzzle style pieces. All right, so this is the joint. And I use uh, like an X-Acto knife with a sharp blade. I'm not gonna cut through to the mesh. The mesh was only there for the assembly. I'm leaving the mesh and uh, you can easily peel up the glass from the mesh because it's already been taped and mounted. Whenever it's installed, it should fit perfect because, because of the puzzle shape. And there shouldn't be any sheet lines at all, which is another reason why I like doing it this way. Let's start carefully lifting off this mesh. And the mesh, it's tacky. It's, it's, uh, it's not really strong, but I use it basically only for the purpose of placing mosaics so they don't move. And it's pretty cool because you can, you can move pieces around if you want to. So, all right, so we've got this. I'm going to call it B1, and I lost my marker. But what I do when I have the piece, it fits in the space, I flip it over. 
and when I flip it over, I want to make sure that everything is flat um, onto the tape. So glass is very inconsistent, so some pieces may slightly be a little thicker than others. So I just kind of push in the pieces so that they're stuck to the tape and it basically flattens out the face. All right, so I take this piece and I set it up This is where I've already got the first row, and I have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, 6, 7, 8. So I have it marked like that. And then this will be B1. And once I get enough pieces to fill a box, then I'll take a picture of this section and uh, send it along with, uh, with my installation recommendations. So each section will have a visual map of um, where it's going. So this is B. Well, I have to use a better marker. This one's dead. All right, this one is B1, and I'll put an arrow so that it's clear that they all face this direction. Got all the hydroborn band bought up, and I got a skim coat that with that don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell. this is the first piece which goes right over here i'm putting it together it's all numbered so this is a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 So this is an ANSI A118.15 mortar. This adhesive is specifically made for glass, as it says on the package. So I gotta get it off. Very good coverage. The way we're going to do this is first Steve's going to key in the thin set into an area. So that's he's back trowelling. So he's going to key it in, make sure we get a good, good bond. Then he's going to trowel it out, get all the ridges. And then once he's got everything very even, he's going to knock down the ridges without removing any material, just flattening the ridges. So I'm gonna put the first piece in. So I'll set in the cornerstone. So just gonna, this is the beta block. Just this one tile, then I'm gonna let Steve take over. You've tested it before. I did. Oh no, it's stuck on there.
So Steve, you pulling the plastic up off up there? I sure am. Now how do you do that? How do you pull the plastic off? Well, I try and pull it on an angle and go nice and slow so if any pieces pop off, I can reset them where they belong. Rather than pulling straight out, you're putting extra pressure on the tile. You pull it back on itself. Yep. Any, any pieces pop off yet? There's two little ones. So far so good. Well, I was saying if we if we increase the trowel size, we'd have less tiles falling off because the increased trowel size would compensate for the different thicknesses in the glass. But that increased trowel size would leave too much thin set, and the bleed out would be outrageous. Yeah, and and the, and the, and scratching out, even though resetting all those little tiles is tedious and and a pain in the in the rear end and very very time consuming, scratching out the grout would be even worse. We're um, just going over any any squeeze through, uh, any loose tiles that may have happened. So um, we're just making sure this clean out all the all the grout joints. Just going over all the details here, scratching out what we need to scratch out, and just getting ready to grout. Okay. Let's see how it works. 